Today I've got the privilege of joining the Committee on the Present Danger as, you're, as I'm speaking to the audience there. I understand from my friend Frank Gaffney you've got a good group of people there and I want to share with you about Unrestricted Warfare. This is a book that was published in 1999 uh, by two senior colonels of the People's uh, Liberation Army. It was the 50th anniversary when this book was published of the PRC, the People's Republics of China being formed. And at the time, China had the seventh largest economy in the world. It was barely the size of 10% of the U.S. economy. And they were working on most favored nation status or permanent uh, trading relations with the United States, which was granted in the year 2000. At the same time, they began to implement the things in this book, Unrestricted Warfare. They began a program of intellectual property theft that as some years has reached $600 billion of theft. Regularly, it happens in the hundreds of billions of dollars annually. They began unfair trade practices and currency manipulation. They began to corrupt relationships both with Wall Street, with industry, but also with the U.S. government. In fact, in 1999, there were serious revelations of things that had taken place just a couple of years earlier in the election where President Clinton was re-elected, the 1996 presidential election. At the time, 58% of Americans felt that this was a major scandal and believed that China had infiltrated our political system. It was proven by foreign intercepts. We had intercepted through our intelligence agencies various foreign communications that documented an effort by the People's Republic of China to influence our election. There was $2.8 million of dirty money returned by the Democrat National Committee that had been put into the Clinton campaign. There were 20 guilty pleas, but the damage had been done, Washington was corrupted, and we have now for two decades seen the influence of China in the American political system. We've also seen the influence of China in, in industry called Chimerica, and we've certainly seen Chinese influence in other areas, including Wall Street. Here we are 20 years later, and unrestricted warfare is in full operation. China dominates many industries, and American industry has been hollowed out. They are now, the Chinese economy is now number two, or by some measures, the number one economy in the world. They went from seventh in the world to number two or number one, following the techniques of unrestricted warfare. And today they have active operations in debt traps, intellectual property theft, a compromised IT supply chain, including their efforts to overtake the 5G markets. They have foreign students infiltrating American universities, Confucius Institutes. They've been buying up assets in Hollywood with the idea of influencing American culture. They have the Belt and Road Initiative that they use to subvert nations surrounding them. There is a call internationally to de-Americanize the world and to remove the dollars, the reserve currency of the world. They have active spying operations and certainly a military buildup and various human rights violations. Now the problem that I have, the greatest problem that I have with this is the fact that China has been funded in large part by the American Wall Street. A good example of that is what happened I think in 2014 with Alibaba. Alibaba listed on the New York Stock Exchange the largest initial public offering in history and they raised 25 billion dollars, most of it American money. What the Americans received in return for their $25 billion were shares in a Cayman Islands corporation that were really called a variable interest entity. A variable interest entity is questionable if it's even legal in China, but they allowed it and received $25 billion. Now that's just one example, but the problem is even the Hong Kong Stock Exchange turned down this initial public offering because they felt there was no transparency and no opportunity for corporate governance. And the accounting systems of China are not to U.S. standards. Right now, there are 156 companies listed that are Chinese listed on American stock exchange exchanges, and there are 600 more companies listed over the counter. There's more than 1.2 
trillion dollars of market capitalization in these Chinese companies, of which 11 of them are entirely state-owned and state-controlled. Another 30-some, 33 of them have massive Chinese ownership, 30% or more. All of them are subject to the People's Republic of China control, or the Chinese Communist Party. Last year, 33 Chinese companies raised $9.2 billion on American exchanges. When we talk about IPOs, initial public offerings, do we realize that $9.2 billion of our money last year went to Chinese companies and four of the 10 largest initial public offerings offered were Chinese? That's more than any other nation, including the United States. They raised more money in the top 10 IPOs than we did for our own companies. Now the problem is these Chinese companies can be tied to human rights violations or our money can be used for a military buildup. They're oppressing religious minorities in China using money coming from Americans. So basically this is unrestricted warfare. What do we do about it? Well you're doing something now. Attending a committee on the present danger uh, briefing is a great step. But we have to educate all Americans to help offset the Wall Street and D.C. corruption that the Chinese have infiltrated us with. There's a new act called the Equitable Act that Senator Marco Rubio has put forward that would delist any companies from anywhere that fail to provide proper American accounting disclosure. Now, most companies will survive this, but Chinese companies won't. They do everything possible to prevent Americans actually looking at the books. There are even laws that prevent you going and looking at the books. Another thing we must do is we must look for alternative supply chains. Whether it's from India or Vietnam or Latin America, we need to build American goods in places where the countries don't want to see America destroyed. And we've got to crack down on intellectual property theft and hacking and we've got to support the Trump administration efforts to hold China accountable. In my lifetime, President Trump is the first president that dared hold China accountable. And so we're very appreciative of that. If you want to learn more about the research that we do, we have a new episode in the Economic War Room. It's a TV show. It's offered on Blaze TV. You can see episode 41 will be released this coming um, Thursday, and it's titled underwriting our adversaries. And I go into detail, what I've given you is a six minute briefing on this, but we'll go into great detail in that episode. You can find out more at economicwarroom.com.